Hey guys, I made a bunch of gradients. Uh, they're free. You can download them. They look crazy over here. The reason I made these is not to do stuff like uh, just do stuff like this. I mean, here's the gradient tool. Whatever, right? But uh, the reason I like these, the reason I made them, was for something a little fancier called a gradient map. Uh, you can find gradient maps over here on the layer tab. At the bottom, there's this black and white circle. Those are the adjustment layers. These are all good. They're really good. Uh, and down in here, we've got the gradient maps. And so, um, hmm, should I explain this? This is, uh, they behave kind of weird, right? Um, what they do is they replace all the colors um, based off of their values. The dark values go, you know, whatever's on this side of the gradient. And then the light color is all replaced by whatever's on this side of the gradient. And it kind of, you know, gradates between them. It's in the name. So um, what's weird is that you can, <laughs> you can put whatever colors you want into this gradient. And you can even move these handles around. And uh, it, they, they, make, uh, they make some weird patterns of color here. Uh, the reason why this is useful is because we can change the blending mode on adjustment layers. So I'm going to change the blending mode here. The default is normal, so we're just going to click on normal. And then uh, let's, uh, you know, <laughs> depending on flavor of the day we can choose a lot of different stuff soft light is kind of my default for gradient maps and this one is still going pretty hard so uh we're going to uh play around with a few options here Ooh, there we go something simple something straightforward but you can see this this one that just goes blue to orange once we have it with uh soft light instead of normal it goes from looking completely insane something that's maybe looks a little broken to um you can see how it's now just tinting the image the light colors are going creamier and warmer and all the dark colors are going bluer cooler right and um all these different gradients are going to behave differently some of them are going to create kind of weird effects they're going to mess with your color they're going to mess with your values and your contrast in addition to adding color. Um, and they're all going to kind of bring their own vibe to the party. Uh, the reason I like gradient maps so much is because there's a point where I'd go, all right, I don't know what I want, but I definitely want more color. I want to, I want to start, you know, slathering on more colors into this canvas. And so I'm, I'm going to pop this open and click through all of my pre-made gradients here and see if maybe some of them are doing something that is in the direction of what I want. And, you know, I won't even necessarily have a conception on what I want at this point. What I want is for the piece to look good. And so I'm going to flip through and see if any of them capture my attention and make me think like, oh, OK, you know, we want blue flame. Do we want orange flame? What do we want? Some of them are more like uh, simple color palettes, while other ones are more like special effects. Um, like this one here, this is nice. This, is, this one is one I use quite a bit. It'll throw some deep red tones down into the shadowed areas. If you turn the opacity down this layer a little bit, you can see how we can kind of give it a little bit of those, those reds in there. And uh, we can even tighten down the range on this a little bit. Just pull these handles around a little bit. And you can start to get these kind of skeletonized patterns where they just like a, a wavy ribbon of color will start to go through the image. And we've got one that's the reverse of that here, the, uh, the orange. Let's turn that back up. You can see that this is just going to apply a little bit of orange over on the high end. And we can make multiples of these. We can take multiple gradient maps and I'm gonna change that blending mode again. And uh, we can start to layer them together even. So here we've got this one that's just adding a little bit of orange over in the, the flames on the head. This one's maybe giving it a little bit of a warm, cool relationship. We're getting these bands of color through here that are very attractive. And this is not the end point for the color, but it's a step building towards 
a color palette that we might want. Instead of going realistic with it, you know, some of these are going to give these very extreme, very strange results. And I'll look at this and say, hey, is this something I want to build on top of? There are some interesting ideas here. And progressing them forwards might mean, hey, I want to get some more red on the face. That could mean pulling these handles around. You can see that where the colors start to land in slightly different spots because we move these handles around. Um, or I might take this and start to paint on top of it and blend more things into it. There's a lot of options. And um, if you want to get these, these gradients for yourself, I made all these, uh, or I made most of them. Some of them are old Photoshop defaults. They're, um, they're over on huckleberry.art. There's a free download on there where you can get these. The link's in the description. And you can try them out for yourself. Uh, they, they're compatible across uh, Photoshop, Krita, CSP, and um, you, can, you can add uh, these gradients, you can import these gradients, and then you can uh, start messing around with this for yourself. Uh, the way to import it into Photoshop is um, we go up, when we have the gradient editor open, um, go to import, and then just look for the automatic color.grd file and uh, Bob's your uncle. So that's it. This is, uh, this is my trick. This is one of my many tricks for adding color to paintings. Uh, I'll also do this part of the way through a painting. I've got another sample image over here. If you just want to hang out and take a look at more colors with me. Usually my, my take on a tool is that if it can break an image, then it's powerful enough to use. Like if it can make something look really bad and screwed up, that means it's good. That means we're on the right track. And you can see like, um, this one's always very interesting to me. I named this one Walking Home. Uh, walking Home's a really interesting gradient because it gives the sense that a thing is in color without really specifically defining the colors. It's very strange. Uh, the red on the very bottom end doesn't always show up. Um, I'll just sometimes want just a hint of that at the very, very low end in the shadows like that. But there's something about this, these, this stripe of stripes of, of warm with a stripe of cool sandwiched between it that gives a sense of of space, uh, of colorization to the image. And you just slap it on there and change the blending mode to soft light. And it, it starts to feel more in color than in black and white. And it works on just about every image. So I'll throw this on concept art really fast. If I'm working black and white in a color, I will use this on an image as I'm just getting started adding colors to it. And it'll create like um, different temperatures for different ranges of value that'll give a sense of volume and space to an image just automatically without having to work too much harder on it. So sometimes ones like this will definitely be in a stack along with other blending modes and other gradient maps, while some of these other ones, they're gonna be used to establish a whole color palette. Um, like if I wanted to just uh, have this be a really warm orange overall, I could start with something like this and just get a nice sepia tone out of it rather than black and white and build from that. Start creating some additional separations from there. Sometimes you get lucky on these. Sometimes you have the right values that when you lay a gradient map on top of it, it'll actually start to look like different elements will separate out into their own unique colors because they have their own um, range of value. And uh, you'll start to get Sometimes you'll just get something that starts to look like it's almost, uh, you know, like in this one, we can see this plane right here starts to go orange. So if we wanted some parts of these to be grass and some parts of them to be dirt, uh, just having them have their own different value ranges means that like uh, some of these gradients are actually going to start to define specific like areas or materials with their particular color. That's if the values of the piece like are, are good for it. But um, this is nice. It's the, the way that it twists the values just a little bit 
is always satisfying to watch. It's this little glimpse into parallel realities when you did the values just a little different. Like, it feels so much more like, this is sort of like when they do um, day for night shooting in movies, uh, where they shoot it during the daytime, they throw a bunch of filters and stuff on top of it. We're basically doing the same process here. So we get this kind of like cinematic day for night feel. It's got a real vibe to it. I dig it. And then um, if it's too much, I'll just turn down the opacity a little bit. So we can, uh, we can layer a couple of these together. And just start to see where this thing is headed. And then if you want an advanced trick, Do a weird one. We make a gradient from black to white here, drag it across the canvas, and you can see it's filling in the layer mask. And uh, we can we can apply this gradient map to just half the canvas or just part of it by um, using the mask to. You could paint in a mask or use a selection as a mask for for these, but sometimes when I'm starting to try to find a color palette, you can see how gradating one of these gradient maps across the whole length of it will start to, ooh, look at that. Sometimes doing these in different orders will make weird stuff happen. But they'll, sometimes you'll just get a, get a, a sense, get a vibe off of playing around with this stuff and I'll I'll just play around with it until I start to find something that really makes me happy layer them over each other change the change the order of them mask some of them out and just play and play and experiment and experiment and just like let the machine show me all these different options of what my thing might look like and then once I start to get close to something that I'm getting inter interested in I'll just go like ooh okay yeah there we go make a new layer and then start working from there and then now now we're off now we're having fun again so uh huckleberry.art link in the description they're free and um i hope you like it i hope you have fun with this thanks so much for checking out my video i'll see you around